I feel a little bad for bringing this up because I kind of feel bad for Gloria Johnson. Does anyone else feel a little bad for Gloria Johnson? I mean, Gloria Johnson's got a hard time of it. You know, she's been a longtime Democrat in the state of Tennessee. You know, one of those lonely blue voices in a sea of red. She has to get about her business in such a way where she has to live a lie. And I feel kind of bad for that person. I don't know Gloria. I've invited her repeatedly on the show. She's welcome anytime she wants to come up. I talk to anyone and everyone. Anyone and everyone. That has entertainment and news value. I will talk to on the on the show. And I think Gloria does. She has offered herself up to service in the United States Senate. She is a Democrat candidate to take on Marsha Blackburn. I think she has a primary opponent in the Democrat primary, if I'm not mistaken. So she has to overcome that first and then take on Marsha. In order to be a Democrat like Gloria, not only do you have to act in a subservient way to others who are newer to the process, like Justin Jones, Gloria Johnson has to naturally be subservient to Justin Jones because Justin Jones is black. That's the way it works in Democrat Party politics. Secondarily, she acts subservient to Justin Pearson because he's a black male. I don't make those rules, but they're pretty obvious when you observe the goings on of what I call the bullhorn trio over the last year or so. Secondarily, Gloria Johnson has to live in a world where she believes Tennessee is a different place than it actually is. She has to make up a fantasy world in order to convince herself that she's making something of a difference in this state. Sadly, she hates the state that she lives in. However, because of that, she makes up this fantasy land that she pretends to live in so as to not hate it as much as she actually does. Marquita Bradshaw from Memphis. There you go. And That's it, her primary opponent. It remains a open question as to whether or not Marquita Bradshaw will beat Gloria Johnson or not. Well, the reason I feel bad for Gloria is that uh, CNN, I say hashtag never CNN. I'll watch CNN so you don't have to. It's a garbage network full of garbage people spewing out, well, garbage. CNN posted a story a couple of days ago, and I, I flagged it for presentation today, regarding the, quote, high stakes presidential election that takes on an increased significance for Democrats' precarious path to holding power in the Senate. A lot of alliteration from anxious anchors placed in powerful posts. CNN pontificates that the election map indicates that this is going to be a pretty difficult year for Democrats in the United States Senate. And they're right. Joe Manchin's decision not to run for re-election indicates that West Virginia is about to run red in that Senate seat. And I don't think there's any way for the Democrats to stop it. The 2024 playing field in the United States Senate is rather advantageous for Republicans. CNN says, but President Joe Biden winning re-election would give Senate Democrats a slight cushion because of the tie-breaking role of the vice president in an evenly divided chamber. The GOP needs to pick up only one or two seats, depending on which party wins the White House, to flip control of the Senate. Virginia has long ranked as the seat most likely to flip. And with Manchin's departure, Republicans are now almost certain to pick it up. So they go on to talk about seats most likely to flip. And, and this is the beautiful thing about elections. When Democrats don't have the ability to steal them, the voters, when the voters are left to decide how these things work out, the Democrats have laid a, an ideological playing field bare. And they've made it plain that they believe in these extremist socialist positions of their political party more so than they believe in Democrats in Iowa. They believe in the New York City position on issues than they believe more so than they believe in, I don't know, the Democrats that might be living in Montana right now. They have an ability to attract middle America with some of their policy positions, and they choose to go directly 180 degrees away from those things that might draw people in. Joe Biden has done it. I mean, 
There was a time when Joe Biden was considered a moderate choice, far too moderate for the leftist wing of his political party. And look, and I don't believe Joe Biden knows his butt from a hole in the ground. The man has dementia written all over him. And I'm on record as saying there's zero chance that he will be the political nominee after their convention. I thought this would have happened by now. But it has not. And I do not see by summer how the Democrats that are actually in charge don't understand that Biden, even as a figurehead for your party, is a drag and it will ultimately lead to Donald Trump's reelection. I hope that's what happens. But I don't think even Democrats are that dumb. But regardless what they can or cannot steal from the presidency, and regardless of where they choose to live and breathe in terms of the ideological spectrum, and they've lurched way left, they always overplay their hand, they're about to get their butts handed to them in the United States Senate. West Virginia is one. Democrat Joe Manchin has decided not to run for re-election. By the way, Donald Trump carried West Virginia by about 40 points in the last presidential election. So Republicans are going to pick up that seat. It is almost a fait accompli. I, I would I would doubt that the national Democrats spend a lot of time or money in West Virginia. I think they give up on it. But that's not the only one. You also have Montana. Democrat John Tester has long been known as a moderate's moderate. His reelection bid will be a barometer as to whether incumbents with a brand unto themselves can still buck the partisanship of their states. Manchin had that going for him, and he was the he was the name that was nationally known, right? Joe Manchin had made a name for himself that carved a niche above the label of Democrat, and he was able to win reelection. I don't know that Joe Manchin could have won reelection this time around or not. I don't think John Tester can either. Tester's done a similar thing in Montana, but Republicans have been enthusiastic about presenting a candidate of their own. Um, there are a couple of Republicans that are vying for the possibility of running against Tester. I think um, there's a U.S. representative, and I don't remember, is Matt Rosendale, I think that's right. And there's also a Navy SEAL that's running in that race. But it's expected that Tester is going to have, pardon the, uh, pardon the expression, a little bit of a test. Ohio, I don't think Mike DeWine uh, did Sherrod Brown any favors in Ohio. Uh, Senator Brown is another Democrat facing reelection in a state that Donald Trump carried on two separate occasions. Uh, and I think Mike DeWine's demonstration that every Republican is not a real conservative with his decision making last week regarding transgender youth. I think that will ultimately whip back on Ohio, and that will hurt uh, their chances. There's another race in Pennsylvania. Just running these down, but the, the I'll make the ultimate point about um, Gloria Johnson here in a second. Pennsylvania, uh, it's a it's a clear path for Dave McCormick. Obviously, McCormick was working toward a Senate seat when he was bested by Mehmet Oz. That should not happen this time around. And um, and now they've already launched their fight against Bob Casey well before the election year even started. That that race has been going on for months now. Uh, Arizona, you've got independent Kirsten Cinema who continues to be coy about whether or not uh, she's going to run for reelection as an independent or choose a political party. Uh, that's a contested race that very, very easily could go to Republicans. Nevada has one as well. Wisconsin. Uh, Republicans don't have a major candidate there, but it's expected that Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin is going to get a fight on her hands. Uh, in Michigan, uh, there is a huge race going on there. Uh, there's a retiring Senator, Debbie um, Stabenow, or Stabenow, uh, Stabenow. Texas is considered the one race that could swing against Republicans. This is Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz only won his race last time around by three points. Uh, Ted Cruz is an attractive boogeyman for the left because he is so outspoken. 
and a little bit awkward. But I believe that there will be massive amounts of money infused into the state of Texas. And uh, I would expect a little bit of voting shenanigans because Texas has been inundated with illegal aliens, some of whom are going to want the right to vote, whether they've been there for several years or several months. So that will be fraught with illegal ballots and ballot harvesting and these types of things. Uh, and then Florida is the final race. So the, the CNN story that I'm referencing has 10 races in it. How sad are you if you're Gloria Johnson and they don't even list you as the top 10, one of the top 10 contested races? Yet she lives in a world where she claims she's going to secure victory over Marsha Blackburn. Over Senator Biden. But now I understand that some of us have, you know, frustrations with Senator Blackburn. I have frustrations with any politician with regard to priorities and where they put their central focus and where they might not put their central focus. But I don't allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good when it comes to Blackburn or Haggerty or anybody else for that matter. You evaluate on a case-by-case basis and you move forward with that. I'll tell you this, Marsha Blackburn is a damn sight better than Gloria Johnson, who is a, a socialist, certainly. And seems to think she lives in a state that she doesn't live in consistently repeating or regurgitating that uh, Tennessee is much bluer. Tennessee doesn't believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, Tennessee doesn't believe in protecting our children from transgender puberty blocker type issues or surgery, uh, surgery type issues that will mutilate the child permanently. She's on the wrong side of all of these issues, yet doesn't seem to understand why more Democrats aren't supporting her. Because they don't exist, Gloria. They're not here. You know, I understand that you want to live in a fantasy world where the state of Tennessee is actually blue, but it's not. Oh, you've got a little dot in Knoxville, certainly a, a, a slightly larger dot in Nashville and a slightly larger dot still in Memphis. But other than that, ruby red, baby, and expected to remain so 2024 and beyond. So there's a little election run. There's hope in 2024, I guess. What I'm trying to present to you is I am so hopeful from a political perspective. Um, does it not feel like the end of the Jimmy Carter era? I don't, I know that I wasn't politically aware in 1978, 1979, and 1980. If you were, tell me, 615-737-9986, does 2024 not feel a little bit like 1980? That we've had to deal with? With the policies of a Democrat president for these four years, the awfulness of dealing with that, the inability for said Democrat to navigate us out of some of the uh, economic woes that we're feeling as a country, the inflationary byproduct of Democrat policies that we're feeling, the woeful energy policy presented by Joe Biden, the woeful foreign policy presented by Joe Biden, you tell me. Does 2024, not 44 years later, feel a little bit like 1980? I understand that the candidate's a little bit different on the Republican side, but it certainly feels that way to me.